welcome to a very special episode of Daniela Vate. I'm here right now at the Global Genes Rare Advocacy Summit in San Diego. As you can see, I'm right in front of the sign here. So this vlog is a little different, so it's not going to include any hotel accessibility reviews, none of that. That will be included from where I'm staying in San Diego in another vlog. So if you want to check that out, you can subscribe. But this vlog is going to be a compilation of as much as I can get from this event, from exhibit uh, exhibitors, booths, and some talks. And it's just one uh, aspect of one person going to the event. I can't go to everything because there's multiple things happening at once. So without further ado, let's get to the conference. After registering, I got my name tag and added some ribbons that explain why I'm attending the conference. At times, there were up to four events happening at once, and they were color-coded by general category, but you weren't restricted to staying on a specific track, like I mixed and matched different categories that I attended. Since this was my first summit that I attended, I went to the freshman orientation, and as you'll see, there was a bingo card that was made as an icebreaker to get to know the other people in the orientation. I won't show all the food, but there was plenty of snacks, and these were just an example of the box lunch varieties that were available at lunch. Before I show some clips from the talks, I will say that I didn't record every talk that I went to because I was using my phone to be less distracting. So you may want to turn on closed captioning at some points because the quality of audio isn't the best. How many of you, is this your first time to the Rare Advocacy Summit? Oh my god. <laughs> So when we set this agenda, we really wanted to offer actionable steps and strategies to enhance your advocacy. I think what you'll see is that each topic fits into one of the three pillars of Global Genes mission, support, education, and research. And many of them cover multiple, and some all three. So we'll have four tracks this year, empowering the rare individual, community and capacity building, becoming a research-ready organization, and the Rare Disease Masterclass, Science and Tech Innovation. Global Genes was founded on building hope. And right now, as you come into this conference, your hopes may feel very general. After attending sessions, I hope that you will have discovered new ways to focus and intensify what you hope to accomplish next. Jamie's book tells the story of how parents of children diagnosed with Neiman C became citizen scientists, identifying promising new treatments, helping design experiments, recording data, co-authoring scientific papers, generally driving everything forward, working with researchers, doctors, and the whole ecosystem, including the FDA, to try to save their children's lives and advance efforts in research and future treatment therapies and cures. To find cures, we need everyone to share their knowledge and participate in the endeavor. What I learned from immersing myself in the NPC collaboration is that patients and families can become co-developers of studies, co-analyzers of critical information, and co-devisors of strategies to develop drugs and advance scientific research. The families proposed hypotheses, and so did the scientists. What I do want to tell you is that my book and the message I'm sharing today do not apply only to NPC disease. What the families and the scientists did, in my opinion, is relevant to any disease that has no cure or needs better cures or needs additional cures. Categories that I imagine must include the diseases that everyone in this room and beyond is working on. My hope is that people who read the book or hear me talk or are in this room working together will be inspired to see themselves as scientists and co-collaborators. We must first recognize that families and patients and clinicians and researchers, we are all scientists and all of our knowledge and our expertise is crucial to advancing cures. We must all work together bringing that group, and I always tell anyone that will listen, we don't have time 
for infighting. We need to be able to come together as much as we can. We also need to make sure that we're reaching out to other organizations. I mean, look around you. These are people that you can reach out to. I see a lot of nonprofits come in, and there, there's one person trying to do it by themselves. You've got to have a board. You know, even if it's just a board of advisors, that they don't have to have a formal role. And, and people say, well, how do you start a board? You just ask people, right? And then you put them on your website, and that's your board. <laughs> and then we wanted them to open something up that they were excited to play with. And so there's a patient support group on the side. There's a positive message, Hello Cure, that's fun. And then an out-of-the-box experience begins that says, let's do it. Simple instructions, minimal language, lots of pictures. But what people, what our user community really loved with this first message of, you open up this card and you've got inside of it, here is the card, I'm sorry, I've played with the box too much. There's a Bento Bio share holder card in there that lets you create a wallet. And from out of the gate, we wanted to test the value proposition of saying to patients that you're a value creator in this enterprise of therapeutic development. Um, and that that wallet was going to provide you with real-time micro rewards for the contributions you were making each time you performed a task. And we needed to test this to see, can you collect reliable data? Can you collect blood yourself? It turns out you can. Can you collect, you know, we all know we can do the saliva because everybody's exposed to 23 and me these days. Um, and so we just turned this into a biosampling experience that was fun, that would allow you to scan something and launch a fun modern um, uh, animation that is in pharma sponsor term, a standard operating procedure. The part of this that's not visible is we asked basic questions. What do you want to be paid? What's fair market value to you for your time to participate in doing the work of a clinical trial as a value creator? Um, and, and when we framed it that way, We've had 100% compliance so far with people participating. So it's still day one, and I've gone to some really great sessions so far, but now I'm going to check out the booths. First was Expecting Health. Expecting Health is a nonprofit based out of D.C., and we really work in that maternal and child health space where we're looking to infuse that patient and family voice in systems and in that systems change. So really what we're doing is, so when I talk about systems change, we're really trying to ensure that um, that patient and family voice is center in that. And so that both we do it on two ways. So first off is we try to make sure that families and family leaders, that they have what they need to be able to act that way, have those sort of tools that they need, as well as we sit on a lot of advisory committees and talk about why it's so important to have patients and families there at the very beginning and not just at the end, but really as true stakeholders. For more information, you can check out their website, expectinghealth.org, or the YouTube channel above, or pretty much any social media. Now we'll hear from the N. Lorem Foundation. So the N. Lorem Foundation is a nonprofit organization that discovers, develops, and provides personalized experimental medicine to those with nano-rare diseases. Uh, so what is a nano-rare disease? It defines a patient population that affects 1 to 30 people worldwide. So we discover um, these drugs for these people, and we provide it to them for free for life. You could find us at nlorem.org, N-L-O-R-E-M.org. Uh, we also have a podcast called the Patient Empowerment Program. We created that to really provide a forum for people with nano rare diseases, uh, just because they are most, sometimes the only person in the world who has that disease. So we connect, we really provide this forum for people to just come together, a uh, community for nano rare. Now we'll hear from Rare Patient Voice. Career Patient Voice connects patients and caregivers with all kinds of research opportunities. Everything from focus groups and surveys and interviews to clinical research. Pam's mic unfortunately cut out, but she's telling about the ways that you can earn money. And this is true because I did earn $120 for one hour in a recent study and just got my check in the mail. Earn $120 an hour. 
not for clinical research, but for the other types of research. And a lot of times it's something, it could be something really interesting, like a new product coming online or a, a company that might be developing a website and they want to see, make sure that people can navigate through it properly. There are all kinds of studies out there that you can participate in. You can learn more and sign up at rarepatientvoice.com, and they're also available on pretty much every social media. Now we'll hear about Horizon Therapeutics and their Rare Is program. We're with a company called Horizon Therapeutics, and about four or five years ago, we decided we wanted to do, do more to raise awareness and education for people living with rare diseases. So we started this campaign called Rare Is, and it all started with a hashtag where we asked people to say, you know, rare is what that means to them. So rare is hope, rare is energy, rare is whatever it was to them. And over time, we've we got so many stories and we heard from so many in the community and partnered with great groups like Global Genes here and other advocacy organizations. And we wanted to grow and grow the program. So today we have a whole team of people that are working on this Rare Is program at Horizon. Michelle Rivas, who's here, Kate Quinn, members of our advocacy team. And it's grown to be much more than just an awareness program. We have a program for young adults or any adult really uh, to apply for a Rare Is scholarship to help them with whatever further education they want to do. We have a Rare Is adoption fund, so families who are interested in adopting a child with a rare disease. We partner with an organization called Gift of Adoption to make that possible. And then we have another program called the Rare Is Advocate Grant. And so that's, those are $5,000 grants that are provided to advocacy organizations all over the world. And this year, I think we gave 50 Rare Is Advocate Grants, so we keep growing and growing that program. For more information, go to rareiscommunity.com or find them on Instagram and Facebook. As you can see here, there were many awesome digital posters, and I was lucky enough to run into one of the authors of one while I was waiting there. Hi, I'm Melody Kaiser. I'm the Director of Patient Engagement for an organization called Cure LBSL. We're an ultra-rare um, neurodegenerative disorder that often affects children. Um, and then teens and adults as, as they age with the disorder. And we had our first FDA patient listening session. And we wanted to really take advantage of the time that we were given. You have only 90 minutes to engage with the FDA. So we were trying to get creative about ways to, um, to share the patient experience in such a short period of time. They only let us bring five to seven patient representatives and that doesn't cover it when you have a disorder that has such a wide phenotype. So we engaged with um, two different types of artists to help us tell the story. And the picture that you see here is um, some an illustration that uh, Ink Factory Studios made for us. And what it did was they made a building PowerPoint. So it started off with what it feels like to live with LVSL. And as we went through the story, telling people's perspectives, um, it kept adding additional illustrations. So you'd get next, 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 until the whole picture, the whole poster was created. Um, we also worked with Britt Faulkner, who's a, an incredible um, video creative. And she helped us take little snippets that families had submitted of what it's like to live with LVSL and she put it together into this beautiful compilation set to music that just brought us to tears. Um, it was so powerful and so engaging and so by using those different um, multimedia technologies we were able to tell the LVSL patient story to the FDA in a way that we wouldn't traditionally do with regular PowerPoint. For more information go to curelbsl.org and find them on pretty much any social media. And now we're going to hear from the Fighting for Caden Foundation. The Fighting for Caden Foundation uh, raises awareness and uh, fills the gap for families with uh, fighting with spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA. It's one of the neuromuscular diseases. Caden, um, who's in the, the name of the foundation in honor, um, passed away, unfortunately, last year. And we are continuing the fight um, for in his honor and memory. But we fill the gaps in giving families the needed equipment, like a pull socks or a cough machine or a suction that insurance won't won't pay for a backup piece of equipment, but it's still life saving because if that piece of equipment fails and they don't have a backup, um, you know, it's really needed. Also the small wheelchairs, like in this picture, um, 
insurance usually doesn't cover the small pediatric manual wheelchairs or a power versus manual wheelchair. So we fill in those gaps. We also give families um, sponsor, you know, families to go to conferences like this and, and the annual SMA conference. So that's, that's our mission um, and just raising more awareness for our disease. For more information, go to fightingforcaden.org or check out their Facebook page. And now we'll hear from Team Impact. So Team Impact is a national nonprofit that matches uh, kids between the ages of 5 and 16 with life-altering medical conditions or disabilities with their local college athletic team. Um, so we match young boys with men's college teams and young girls with women's college teams. Um, it's a two-year program uh, based on a clinical model. So it's a really hands-on, um, awesome experience for the kid, for their family, um, to really feel part of a team and have that social, emotional uh, wellness and benefits that come from the camaraderie of a team dynamic. For more information, go to teamimpact.org or check them out on social media. And it's such an honor for me to be up here with Charlene. We're, we're honored, we're excited to be here tonight to recognize the inspiring work of individuals and foundations around the world and their, contrib and their contributions to the rare disease community. Nice. Those in the rare disease community who raise the bar with their innovative approaches to research, excuse me, research, programming and advocacy to create meaningful impact. To introduce you to this year's Rare Champion in Advocacy, Medical Director of the Sickle Cell Association of Delaware, Dr. Marjorie DeJoie Brewer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you this year's Rare Champion in Research. Principal Research Fellow, Telethon Kids Institute, Perth, Dr. Helen Leonard. Everyone, it is my absolute pleasure, pleasure to introduce you to this year's rare champion in industry, Senior Director of Patient Advocacy at Catalyst Pharmaceuticals, Amy Grover. And you can read our stories along as we're also introducing ourselves, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about our stories, um, managing life without a diagnosis. Some of you may know the Every Life Foundation recently came out with their report, and on average it can take up to seven years to receive a diagnosis. And so on average means that some are actually longer than that, and many of you probably are familiar with that or have ex lived experience with that. And so... That's why we really felt like this topic was important. And we're going to share our stories, and we're going to share a little bit of our experiences, and we absolutely will have time for questions later. And our mission is to improve access to diagnosis, research, and care for all individuals with undiagnosed and ultra-rare diseases. Um, I'm going to give you a little preview on a coming soon program. It's our patient navigation program. Our intention is to support patients and families from before they even apply to the Undiagnosed Diseases Network through the end of whatever their continuum may be. Receiving a diagnosis, not receiving a diagnosis. Um, ultimately, probably hopefully 2025, our intention is also to offer this service to patients who are not being seen at the UDN. But for our pilot, we are starting with patients who are actually applying to the Undiagnosed Diseases Network um, and hopefully accepted and going on to being seen at one of the sites. So. For more information, go to udnf.org or check them out on social media. And now we'll find out more about the Rare Genomes Project. So my name is Brian Mungilog. I'm a senior coordinator with the Rare Genomes Project out of the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. Uh, we are a research study that is providing whole genome sequencing for individuals and families that have a suspected genetic condition but are still genetically undiagnosed. Uh, and our study is completely remote and done free of cost, so we're able to enroll people throughout the U.S. Um, of all languages. Uh, and all that we ask is that we have a consent session, uh, they send us uh, blood samples, and then we do the whole genome sequencing in-house. And ideally, at the end of it, we're able to return uh, a genetic diagnosis to a family. Uh, we work with the doctor, with the family, uh, to see what next steps are and just make sure that they're comfortable. Um, but ultimately, we're just trying to 
bring genome sequencing uh, to families directly and make this technology and this testing more accessible. For more information, go to raregenomes.org or check them out on Facebook. And now we'll talk to the Waha Warriors. I'm Karen Jones, Executive Director of the Waha Warriors, and we represent warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia. It is a, a rare disease, and it um, affects only one in 200,000 patients. Uh, we have a very active Facebook group, and you can find us uh, there. And also, you can find us uh, on our website, wahawarriors.org. Now we'll hear from Global Genes. Hi, my name is Mary Morlino. I'm the patient services manager at Global Genes, and I manage the Rare Concierge program. The Rare Concierge program at Global Genes is a free program where anybody who has any questions about their rare disease experience can reach out, and we help to provide connection, resources, information based on their unique needs. And through that work, we learn a lot about the community and what the needs are. So for today, I'm talking about Rare Concierge with people who are attending the Rare Advocacy Summit. And with my cute little hats here, what this is, is we're asking people what are their greatest needs or what has been their greatest needs. So for example, this one is about the beginning. At the beginning of your journey, what were some of your greatest needs at that time? And then we have another one for current. Where are you right now? What needs do you have? Because often they're not the same from when you first started. And then the last one is about future. And I picked yellow because yellow is a sign of hope. So looking towards the future, what do you possibly foresee as potential needs you may have? And what this does for us, it helps to inform us like the pulse of the community and what the needs are so we can best serve the community directly on what their needs are. So this is helpful, helpful information and we appreciate people sharing that information. So if you have any questions about rare disease, by all means, reach out to Rare Concierge. More than happy to help you in your journey. I'm also a patient, so I understand a lot of the experiences that many people go through, and we try to provide you the best way to help you and empower you to have the best quality of life. For more information, go to globalgenes.org or check them out on social media. And now we'll hear from the Assistance Fund. Hi, I'm Stephanie Marshall. I'm with the Assistance Fund, and we're a nonprofit organization, and we help people with high out of pocket medical expenses. You can learn more at TAF, T A F, CARES, C A R E S, one word, dot org. You can also check them out on social media. Now we'll hear from Trevere Therapeutics. Hello, I'm Eve Dreyer, and I am the head of patient advocacy at Trevere Therapeutics. And Trevere is a biotech company that's based in San Diego. Um, we are exclusively devoted to rare disease. Our involvement is in rare kidney disease, and we are also involved in homocystinuria. And we are an amazing, amazing company that are in rare for life. Our goal is to be able to identify the unmet treatment needs in the rare disease community and work very closely with the patient organizations in terms of helping them help their members achieve the best quality of life that they can. I am here at the Global Genes Rare Advocacy Summit for two reasons. Actually, I was here from the beginning of the week for the Health Equity Forum, which I've been involved in since the very beginning of the Health Equity Forums being held three years ago, and was happy to be a speaker there and happy to lead table talk conversations on the importance of providing mental and emotional health support for patients and families in the rare disease area. And I think that one of the most important things that we get out of participating in Global Genes is the opportunity to work directly with patients and help them amplify their voices. It's really important that patients get to tell their stories to the right people. And the right people are very varied. The right people can be your doctor, because your doctor should understand so much more than just your like maybe five, six inches full file of test results. They need to know you. They need to know your family. 
They need to know what you've been through. They need to know how hard it's been to get to a diagnosis if you've gotten to a diagnosis. So it's telling the patient's story to the physicians, which really motivates me and really got me very involved with a number of the people at Global Genes. It's helping patients amplify their voices when it comes to access to innovation, innovation in treatment, innovation in diagnosis, and they also need to know how to amplify their voices when it comes to health policy and legislation. So all of those things really are very committed areas that Global Gene has been involved in. So we're very, very proud to be one of their foremost supporters, have been for many, many years, and will continue to do so. Go to Trevere.com to find out more information or check them out on social media. And now we'll hear from the Pan Foundation. I'm Stacy Brown. I'm with the Pan Foundation, and we help people, under, underinsured people with rare diseases or chronic diseases, help get them the medication and treatment that they need and deserve. Here at the Pan Foundation, we assist patients in the form of grants to help with their out-of-pocket costs for medication, supplies, insurance premiums, as well as transportation. The Pan Foundation currently has a um, roughly over 72 disease funds that we support in this mission. For more information, go to panfoundation.org or check them out on social media. And now we'll hear from the Center for Precision Animal Modeling from the University of Alabama. Hi, I'm Alexandra Fukshinska, and I'm part of the University of Alabama Birmingham Center for Precision Animal Modeling. And so we are, our, we are a NIH-funded center, and we create animals that have patient variants. Um, and so we have these little gummy goodie bags, and as you see represented, we have mice and rats, we have uh, xenopus or frogs, we have worms, C. elegans, and then we also have zebrafish. And what our center does is we create these animal models and work with patient foundations, researchers, and clinicians to help further research on rare disorders. Um, and we have many aspects of this research um, that helps understand the basic science of different disease mechanisms, but also serve as uh, models for then treating with different um, drugs and therapeutics, um, even all the way to some ASO strategies as well. So we help make the model and pass it off to researchers and any other um, patient groups that can take that model and run with it and do more for the rare disease community. For more information, go to sites.uab.edu backslash CPAM. And now we'll hear from the PFIC Foundation. Hello, I'm Alexandra Perez here representing the PFIC Advocacy and Resource Network. And we represent uh, PFIC, which is an umbrella disease for a few different uh, subtypes of PFIC. And it's a rare genetic liver disease that causes progressive liver failure and usually the need for a liver transplant before the age of 10. And one of the hallmark symptoms of PFIC is a intractable, insatiable internal itch. Um, that is so bad that it can be the cause of a liver transplant. So we are here advocating and representing. You can find out more information at pfic.org. As well as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay, great. And what some of this um, in, into, is it separate, this um, merch? This merch is separate, so I'm a pfic mom and I wanted um, advocacy related stuff to wear and to have and so I created a business called Chosen and Created and so I sell this kind of stuff. You can find Chosen and Created on Etsy and Instagram. And now we'll hear from Flock. Hi my name is Sarah Chamberlain. I'm the executive director and founder of Flock. Flock was um, national PKU news for about 35 years which served the inborn errors of metabolism community and Flock is now a multi-disease organization serving about six to nine disorders and sub-disorders, um, all of whom have inherited meta metabolic disorders of protein metabolism. And uh, when we changed our name, everyone asks if it's an acronym, and it's not. It's about uh, creatures come together in a flock for protection and support and to go somewhere. And so it's really emblematic of our mission to not only provide support and resources for the community, but to help use the community's data 
to help drive research forward. And so we are launching an app soon that um, looks at the lived experience of individuals with these metabolic disorders, helps them understand their disorder, work with their clinicians and their caregivers, and then ultimately a research platform that um, will help define what is focused on for industry and research based on the sort of natural history of our community. We're at Flock Health on social media and then flock.org is the website. Okay. And now we'll hear from Help Hope Live. Hi, so my name is Sunny Mullen and I'm the Director of Outreach with Help Hope Live. We are a national nonprofit that assists individuals living with major medical conditions to go into their communities to fundraise for all of their medical expenses and related costs. And I have my coworker, Carly Nia, and one of our peer ambassadors, uh, Dylan Mortimer, here as well. So we're just so thankful to Global Genes for putting on this event and to be able to get more resources out to the community. Go to our website at www.helphopelive.org. And now we'll hear from the Dirk 1A International Association. Hello, my name is Anna Downey. And I'm Amy Cluxton. We are here for the Dirk 1A Syndrome International Association. The Dirk 1A is a neurodevelopment um, disease. You can find more information and how to connect with us either on our website, dirkwanae.org, or on our social media, Dirk 1A Syndrome International Association. And now we'll hear from Accessia Health. Hi, I'm Dave with Accessia Health. We are a non-profit patient assistance organization. We help people with their copay premium assistance, transportation, out-of-pocket expenses that people have. We consider ourselves a safety net for the rare disease community and for chronic illness patients. And uh, we have 77 different disease programs that we have funded. We're funded primarily by pharma. And happy to talk to anyone who comes by our table to talk about uh, patient advocacy and how we assist patients nationwide. We have uh, www.accessiahealth.org and we have Twitter and LinkedIn handles. You can easily find us looking for Accessia Health. And now we'll hear from Living in the Light. I'm Jamie, I work with Living the Light, and we are a rare disease patient advocacy organization. We share stories through photo, video, and narratives. And so we work to really humanize the conditions and spread the word about what it's like to live with a rare disease. Head to frompatienttoperson.com and uh, see some of our work. And now we'll talk to Project Bellcast. Hi, I'm Bridget Kelleher. I'm an associate professor at Purdue University and I run Project Mocast. So this is a clinical trial funded by NIH and it's for rare disorder caregivers. So our goal is to understand what types of support systems are the best match for caregivers based on their individual family needs. So right now we are enrolling caregivers of children with genetic conditions um, or young adults with genetic conditions ages 2 to 35. Um, the child or young adult has to have a a condition that's typically associated with intellectual disability and the goal of this project is to provide some different supports to caregivers put them head-to-head -head, and see which types of supports are the best match so families who enroll might receive anything ranging from self-guided resources all the way out to free individual or group therapy we have special programs for our black caregivers who receive a support program that's designed and delivered by black psychologists we also have some special supports available for families of younger children focused on parenting skills. So the one trick with a clinical trial is when you sign up, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. It is a randomized controlled trial, but everybody receives some sort of support that's evidence-based to, to help families of children with rare disorders. So um, we'd love to hear from you and feel free to email wellcast at purdue.edu to figure out if your family's eligible or to share more about our, our project with your community. And now we'll talk with Uplifting Athletes. Hi, I'm Rob Long with Uplifting Athletes. Our organization and, and our mission is to harness the power of sport to build in a community that invests in the lives of people impacted by rare diseases. We work with athletes at the college and professional level to elevate the platform of rare disease and invest in the next generation of rare disease researchers and provide families impacted by rare diagnosis unique opportunities to engage with our partners at the college and NFL levels. You can find more information at upliftingathletes.org. We're on social media. We are on Instagram at upliftingathletes. We are on uh, Twitter, I guess formerly known as Twitter and X at upliftingath and on LinkedIn at upliftingathletes. 
So right now I'm right near the podcast studio, which is right behind me. You can see the on-air um, the sign over there. So this is um, a podcast called Insightful Moment. Insightful Moment, which is a podcast presented by PTC Therapeutics, which tells patient stories. So I'm getting ready to be on their podcast soon. I just signed up this morning. I wasn't even preparing for this. I don't even know what it's about patient stories. So I'm going to have to talk about myself a lot soon. So I should probably stop talking to myself now. Insightful Moments is on pretty much every podcast network, but also ptcbio.com slash insightful dash moments if you want to listen to the two Global Gene Summits episodes, and I'm actually the first part of the first episode. And now we'll hear from Project Alive. Hello, I'm Kristen McKay, the Executive Director of Project Alive. Project Alive is a Hunter Syndrome research and advocacy organization where we work to find curative medicine for our Hunter Syndrome, help support families, help support other types of research for Hunter Syndrome, and work for legislative advocacy efforts for many families of rare disease. You can find us at www.projectalive.org. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And now we'll hear from the IGAN Foundation. Hi, my name is Yolanda, and I represent the IGAN uh, community. Uh, We are here uh, as ambassadors for the state of California. My disease, which is mine, I'm a patient, is IGA, which is aminoglobin A and how the disease manifests is it um, attaches to the kidneys and it builds inside the kidneys and over time you can lose your function to wind up in in stage renal disease which would you then you would need um, transplant or dialysis and the organization that you can reach out to it's igan.org for more information and now we'll hear from the rare village foundation hi i'm casey woolabin with rare village foundation Rare Village is a fiscal sponsorship. We are here to help families uh, who want to raise funds for research and who don't have their own 501c3 nonprofit. So they come over, come under Rare Village's nonprofit umbrella. If you're interested, please reach out to us and we're happy to help. For more information, go to rarevillage.org. I tried to talk to every booth that I could, but it's like going trick-or-treating on Halloween. You just don't get to every house. And there were times where I saw the booth and no one was there to talk to. So here's just a few that I filmed, but I'm sure that I still missed some. So if I did miss your organization, feel free to post some more information about it in the comments. Nice to meet you, Mark. Before I go to that you've taken away multiple actionable takeaways. So as Susanna said, let's keep this revolution moving forward. And hope buoys us, but I also hope that you've learned ways to step into your power and make things happen. So keep in touch. Global Genius is here to support you, whether it be through our concierge team, our patient navigation services, our Global Advocacy Alliance, and you know our other programs. So really encourage you to take advantage of those. Um, we are really here to serve you as advocates as you are going through your journey. Um, so we will see you next year. Oh. Hey, so the conference just ended. Uh, I can't believe it's already ended after this whole week. It was really great. And thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you learned a lot and um, clicked on all the links that popped up above. And next year, the event is in Kansas City. So very exciting. So can't wait to see what else the global genes and rare disease community accomplishes in the next year. Thanks again for watching and subscribe if you're interested in any of my other content on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. So thanks so much. And don't forget to check out Global Genes YouTube page to see full recordings of all the talks.